You're listening to Thunder Quack Podcast Network. This is the Thunder Quack Podcast. The official podcast of Thunder Quack Podcast Network. Where anything can happen. So strap yourselves in and hold on to your butts. It's Thunderquack time! Hello and welcome back to the Thunderquack podcast, the official podcast of Thunderquack.com. You can get it early every Tuesday morning at patreon.com slash Thunderquack, or you can wait and get it late on Fridays uh, on podcast services across the galaxy. I am one of your hosts, Michael Cohen. And I am your other host, Amanda Conkin. Uh, and uh, we're back. We're back after uh, a few weeks of... Um, the world burning. The, yeah, the world burning. I was going to say special programming, but sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, both are correct. Um, uh, yeah, everything's a little bit crazy right now. But before we get into our topics, uh, just at the, at the top of the show, I want to thank our Patreon supporters uh, including our Patreon producers, JJ Samuel and Brian Murawski, uh, who support us over at patreon.com slash thunderquack. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, our whole community is awesome. Um, it has been, hey, yeah, go ahead. Can, can I want to start doing something that I didn't ask if it was okay with you, but because we're in this digital world and this keeps happening, I'd also like to do a land acknowledgement that I'm actually talking to you guys from the um, unceded territories of the Squamish, uh, Musqueam, and tsleil tooth First Nations. Yes. Uh, I never do that, so. Uh, yeah. Um, Just with all the chaos in the world, I feel like it's good for us to know where we come from and where we are. and Absolutely. Who who got us here and how we got here Yeah. in the... Uh, <laughs> oh, anyways, I, I don't... <laughs> sorry. No, <laughs> it's all good. Just... Look, yeah, this is the thing. Okay, so... Uh, Amanda and I just had a very long conversation before we hit record about a lot of different things. Uh, it's the first time that we've really had uh, a, a chance to connect um, meaningfully uh, in the last couple of weeks. Um, I, and and we, we had a lot to discuss. I, one of the things that we talked about is that moving forward, I, I, we want to do better. We want to be better. And we, we definitely want to be transparent about that process. And... Um, and, and as I said on the last episode at the end, um, in case in case you missed it, because uh, it was kind of in the outro, um, which I know some people will probably tune out. Um, this is a two-way conversation. So this, this complicated stuff, we're going to talk about complicated stuff, heavy stuff at the beginning of this episode. We're going to take our break for, for ads. And then, uh, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about some, some nerdy, geeky pop culture stuff afterwards. Um, when it comes to that heavy, uh, uh, difficult subject matter, uh, it's a two-way conversation. Uh, we want you guys to be a part of that. Um, your input is super important to us. Um, and uh, if we say something that that rubs you the wrong way or comes across uh, in, in a bad light or any of that sort of stuff, um, don't be afraid to, to talk to us about it. Uh, to call us out on it um, because because we want to learn we we want to to be better allies uh, we want to be better people <laughs> and, and and we want to make sure that what we're doing is is real and not just um, you know saying what everybody's saying it's not just a, a, a company putting up a, a black square on their Instagram and and then you know like clapping your hands and saying well we did it we solved racism right so um, I want to, yeah, sorry. These are big subjects, big, yeah. big topics, and, um, they're not going to go away anytime soon. Um, uh, mm -hmm. even if it seems like they do, they just go away for us, uh, but they don't go away for other people. So, um, it's important. I think that, that we continue the conversation, but that we do it, like I said, with transparency and, and, and as a two way conversation, um, that, that you guys are engaged in it as well. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Amanda. And this, well, this has just been, I just want to, to get it out of the way. I, 
at, Mike has been doing this a great job, I think. Um, I have a lot of friends that have been really active on social media. Um, but I haven't been as engaged as I want. I mean, obviously, I'm engaging in my own ways, uh, whether that comes from um, engaging with specific organizations or um, different sort of learning, uh, reading, all sorts of stuff. Um, but one of the things that I have been so afraid of is that if you're going to be involved in conversations like this, we have talked for the last whatever. It's almost been a decade, man, about things in the world and that they matter to us and that we want to share them with our audience. Um, but part of the thing that has been freaking me out is that if you say anything, anything you say could be wrong. And that that's the hardest thing I think as like trying to be an ally is to learn and to grow and to realize that all you got to do is you just got to like be okay with failing and being saying the wrong thing and learning from it and moving on. Um, so that I just think is a really important part of this conversation. So what Mike is saying is that it is not us just sort of saying things out into the void. I very much expect to mess up in this conversation and I, um, apologize in advance for that, but I will grow and I will learn. And there was this beautiful theater, theatrical metaphor. And, and I mean, if people have been listening, they know that Mike and I come from theater backgrounds. And I just thought that this was a great way to think about what's happening in the world, especially from a place of white privilege, that you're engaging in a conversation that you might not be able to speak to from a place of experience. And when you're on stage and you're getting notes from a director and the director says, hey, uh, you were supposed to enter from uh, stage left and you entered from stage right. You don't sit there and you go, oh, I'm so sorry. And I, I came late and my headspace was just in the wrong area. And I, I get it. I know that that's what it says on paper, but I just my own like emotionally, I felt like I need to come from stage right. And like, you don't do that. You say thank you and you enter from stage left next time. Like, and so I do want to mm -hmm. try in my life to do that. And I'm going to mess up. I have a tendency to over apologize and over explain <laughs> <laughs> if you know me at all. Um, but that really is, I think, starting the conversation knowing um, that you can only you can only use the knowledge that you have at that moment and um, and learn and grow and be OK to be. I don't like the word hypocrite, but, you know, some people are like, well, well, if I said this last week and I say this this week, doesn't that make me hypocritical? It's like, no, it makes you a human and you learn. Yeah. So I wanted to say that we're open to learning and growing. And this makes me a lot more comfortable being able to actually have this conversation <laughs> right now. Yeah, Thanks, I think Mike. I think what, back to what I was saying a second ago, I, I our community is um, it's so awesome. Uh, this this community that has developed around Thunderquack. I would love to take credit for it. I don't. I don't think that we can. <laughs> um, it's uh, <clears throat> it's organic, so it kind of just happens on its own. But um, I will say that 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 I think uh, you and I, Amanda, have been very intentional um, in in. Uh, we speak our minds. Obviously, <laughs> we're opinionated yeah. people uh, first and foremost. Um, thankfully, I think that our opinions tend to come from from uh, a, a, a good hearted place. Uh, most of the time um i mean every once in a while i, I say so. stuff about star wars in order to ruffle feathers but i <laughs> i but that's star wars so um it exists to ruffle feathers yeah exactly <laughs> i i i and and i hope that what has happened is that our our intention on that is is what has um helped us find like-minded um I uh, awesome nerds awesome nerds yeah that's the best way to put it just uh, uh, awesome nerds that that uh you guys are so open-minded you're so uh supportive of not just us but one another uh what happens in our facebook group is is awesome um it's a it's definitely a, a smaller group because it's our patreon supporters so there's a lot more of you listening than than are in that group but if that group is representative of the whole um then I, uh, I, uh, then, then yeah, like that we couldn't ask for a better group of people to be, to be supporting us, uh, I, both by listening and by, by directly supporting us on, on Patreon. But, uh, but I've just, I've been really proud of, of everybody over there. Um, uh, it hasn't been a huge topic of discussion, but it definitely has come up in relation to certain things. Um, I, uh, and uh, and everybody's been super respectful and awesome about it. And I, and, and that's what gives me the confidence to, to, um, to step out in the way that, that we want to, um, and, and, I uh, and move forward with stuff, right? Like, uh, not, not, I, 
sweep current events to the side and just talk about whatever nerdy happened in the last little while. I mean, granted, we could definitely get into one very specific nerdy topic, which I think we'll probably leave for a different episode um, <laughs> having to do with Harry Potter. I Oh, I, well, I mean, it's very relevant to, I think, some of the political stuff that's been happening this week, too. Anyway, it is but absolutely. Yeah. But I think it's a, yeah. I think like it's its own thing that needs to be dealt with on its own. But yeah. Um, J.K. Rowling is a terp. That's what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Um, she, she, she a just bad if, person. In case you're, in case you're, in <laughs> yeah, case just, you're unsure. just unequivocally bad person. But, <laughs> um, yeah, like, like, I, I, I don't want us to, uh, to have conversations about stuff, and then, um, like I said, with the like, like posting a black square and saying like, oh, we did it, right? We had our conversation. We made a donation. Uh, we're done. Right. We now we don't have to talk about this anymore because it's a difficult subject and it's uh, and, it, and it can be polarizing. Uh, although if it is polarizing, if you are polarized by it uh, in a negative uh, aspect, then um, this is not the podcast for you. And I say that with all love and no respect uh, but you I, should listen but you should listen you should listen if you block out if you block out viewpoints that are not in line For with sure. your own then you don't learn and grow yeah but if you're <laughs> if you're dead set on being a white supremacist i don't think I mean, you're gonna have fun yeah. here um i so I hope yeah we weeded them out in like season two i think so i feel like you're talking about quiver yeah i yeah, yeah. i feel like season two of quiver yeah or what is it i I don't know. We've definitely. I feel like we've gotten rid of. No, I absolutely. I I don't them. expect that we've got that <laughs> we've got too many of them hanging around. But, I don't um, understand why you would listen to us if you yeah, were a no. white supremacist. <laughs> uh, just we're to, doing something terribly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like like so, just to bring like the ongoing conversation is super important, um, and I and. I uh, I say all of that, but also say I have no idea what to do next, um, and that's sort of our our main topic for the first half of the episode. Um, I don't know what Thunderquack as a podcast or as a network does moving forward um, to to make sure that like what I said because when I when I posted about. I posted the episode and then I posted um, about the donation that we made. We made a, a donation to the the uh, NAACP Legal Defense Fund, um, and and what I said in relation to that was that this is part of our our ongoing commitment to inclusion and and um, like like I what what does that mean right? And it's something that we're figuring out. Obviously, like this is. This is mostly a hobby, right? We everybody on the network has a day job that they do, yep. um, and this is something that we do for fun. But just because we're doing it for fun, just because it's a hobby, doesn't mean that it shouldn't also serve a higher purpose, um, and that it doesn't mean that we're not accountable to um, to the same things. I think that that on uh, that that you would hold a corporate. Uh, entity too. Um, I, 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 we, we are for, for lack of a better term, that's what we are. I mean, I, I think of us as a community of podcasters and, and podcast listeners, but like we, we have a responsibility because we have an audience. So what does that, what does that look like? Does it, does it look like us continuing to do what we've done for the last couple of weeks, which is, um, and certainly more, I've done more of this on my own personal Twitter. Um, but the reason why is because our, our Thunderquack Twitter has like, I don't know, it's got like a hundred and something followers. I have like 1100 on Twitter. So that's the platform that I want to dedicate my time on because that's where I'm going to hit the most people. Um, that's where I'm going to, going to be able to affect the most change. Right. But, um, aside from on the actual podcast themselves, but like the other, Sorry, it's go ahead. Just, I've talked a lot. You, you no, jump in. It's, it's all good. I, I am going to. I have a tendency to let you. You just have. You've been articulate and you do have a tendency to just speak to things. And I'm not going to interrupt you very much. I think during this. Um, But I, I do think not only is it what we do as Thunderquack, but I also am always curious about what it is in my 
in my personal life, but also I have a very open and um, wonderful work environment with executives that are, are eager to engage meaningfully. And I don't even know what to suggest for my company to do in a way that is like keeping a conversation going and 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 being impactful and and yeah. continuing to to help us grow and learn and 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 influence things. So I this is a great I hope way to say not only from what what is it that we could do? I don't know. That so so yeah, just you're you're talking from Thunderquack and I agree that's again uh, what do we do from Thunderquack but also what do we do in our in our every in our personal lives and and what can we do in our corporate lives and mm-hmm. so uh I don't know. And I will and I will say everything is going to be different and I don't know does it cuz you um just to speak to like the stuff that has been happening there is uh, like the the blackout campaign was was a thing that sort of didn't go super like it it sort of was like a like a stop and start and anyways it was an interesting engagement experiment and then that people yeah. realize like the power of social media but but it really was it's like oh look at all these people posting black squares but what does it actually contribute to the conversation uh, yeah and, and, it, and people it, w- it was a were, misfire yeah. right like i think it yeah i think it definitely i think when it started and the intention of mm-hmm. it was a positive intention mm-hmm. but but it is um, I mean, like the term slacktivism, I think, uh, yeah. kind of applies, right? <laughs> when yeah. my dad texted me and went, how do I get that black square? I was like, ooh, Interesting. is this actually, is this actually a helpful thing? Yeah, um, yeah. And not to, that's not a slight on my dad, but it's just like sort of, he's not tech, technical, technological. Um, but was engaged in a conversation and thought he needed to like yeah, do something with um, it. But but like, but the, but to to your point of like, what did what 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 was it actually doing, right? Um, and I think that I mean by using co opting the Black Lives Matter hashtag, uh, yeah. which a lot of people did, I did uh, inappropriately. Um, I, but people didn't know because it wasn't yeah. like clear what you were supposed to do. And it's like, well, yeah, a bunch of black squares like having a, yeah. a like clogging up a feed that makes it. But it's kind of like, yeah, I think a great strategy would have been to actually like bomb the other hashtags that were really like racist. Well, and and like, that's what that right. on. So Blackout Tuesday was the was the 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 original intention there. And, it, and it, I think it was yeah. pretty successful in terms of there being black squares everywhere on social media. Mm-hmm. Um I logged off social media for the day, misinterpreting and not doing enough reading and not doing enough. And like I, I tweeted on the Wednesday, I think, mm-hmm. uh, like, hey, I screwed up. <laughs> like I, I didn't put enough time and effort into understanding what that movement was, um, and 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 I certainly didn't track it back to um, to the source. Uh, I just sort of like saw an article, briefly skimmed it and went, okay, cool. And set up all of the tweets, not the tweets, the Instagram posts. Right. Yeah. And use the black lives matter hashtag and stuff like that, which I shouldn't have done the next day. I, I, the, the other side, (laughs) the, the, the white supremacists were planning whiteout Wednesday and, um, (laughs) <laughs> you're gonna love this because I, I don't know i don't know how much you've been up on this but like the k-pop no. fandom oh yes no i did hear about this did yes. jump on that and it they was destroyed that hashtag it was they brilliant. just shut them down and yeah um it yeah. like it is so it was so heartening to see of like this fan yeah. base mobilize and like i don't know how it happened i don't i can't claim to understand any of it but to see them the k-pop fandom is beyond anything that we can come yeah exactly like Like, to see them to see them disseminate that information and mobilize um that quickly as a as a as a counter movement to a counter movement um was so cool uh, was was really really awesome to see uh, and I think it's I think to me one of the one of the positives of the last few weeks has been seeing other groups um, and, and in a different way than with Ferguson I, I other groups coming out and saying clearly we are not doing enough we need to 
we need to Dude. step up our allyship and and do better. And I like that. And I think that's where we're coming from too, is that like yeah, we we talked and about like, this tear stuff down years the ago. Yeah, tear down the statues. This is so exciting for me. But also something that's happening in Canada, which I just think is really interesting, is yeah. a lot of the like most racist things in sports are like derogatory names for like indigenous populations. Yeah, and and that like a, there was this tweet by the Edmonton Eskimos being like, we feel really like strongly about like anti-racism and want to make sure that the community seem heard and like felt and then somebody like retweeted it being like hmm if only there was something you could do personally as an organization yeah. <laughs> to just show your support for the conversation right. About, like, right where it's like there are these things that exist and i just i am so excited i want all of these statues to come down and yeah. i hope that they all are all over the place but there's just like little things where it's like that just make it I don't know, and I guess that's what that's one of the things where this the black square thing, I think that started too in the music industry, right? Like my yeah. industry actually was impacted. Like there was a bunch of meetings that got moved around because we have people that we were like engaging with. But then it, like the conversation around that was that actually there's like a lot of like black artists that were being then like canceled out. And anyways, this is one of my like terrible things where it's like I, that whole day I was just like rife with anxiety being like, what is the right thing? Like, how do you engage in this conversation yeah. right now? that it's such a specific social media movement. And the thing is, I think that the, I'm okay. Like for, for that day, I think that just like being engaged in the conversation, I didn't like say things, but I was able to like look at like the actual voices that were supposed to be amplified and things like that. And I feel like as long as I didn't like disengage entirely, but it's like, how do you know which social media movement is something that's actually contributing to the conversation and which one is something that's set up by like stealthy, like ingrained racist ideologies that you don't even realize that's where it's coming from. Like, yeah. anyways, well, oh I mean, gosh, it's so hard. Yeah. It, but it's, we're going to keep trying. That's the whole point, right? That's, I, that, that's the thing. And I think that's the nature of, of what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish is exactly what we said at the beginning of like we're gonna we're gonna screw up i uh, and hopefully we don't screw up too badly i uh, i uh, or, or hopefully in the past we haven't done things that 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 could be categorized like that but dude <clears throat> yeah go ahead i okay this is like we yeah we're both in a play in high school where the lead actresses <laughs> wore blackface yep that is just a thing that we were part of yeah. in our adolescence. And it's like, how many things in our past that, like, I, I had completely, like, forgotten about that experience as a, what, what were, what was I, 16 or something? That, yeah. like, it was just, like, you know, sitting beside the person who was told by their white drama teacher to put makeup on so that they looked like Michael Jackson. Yeah. Like, it, it's so insane the amount of things that we have participated in in our lives that seems so innocuous and forgettable and that because of our privilege and yeah. because of this and that I'm like, who knows what other things you've been privy to in your life that you were just like now looking back on it is just like freaking horrific. But I think like, but I think the like the important thing there is to have the humility of saying like, well, we were teenagers. It doesn't it doesn't. Yeah. um it doesn't excuse what happened, but it definitely puts the context around us being like, well, I didn't know. I didn't know to know that there was something wrong with no, that, right? But I didn't, exactly. I didn't know what, I didn't really know what blackface was. No. I read that book, Black Like Me, when yeah. I was like in high school and I was like, hey, there's this book that exists about this white person that like went and pretended to be a black person and it like speaks to racism. And my mom was kind of like, uh... Yeah. Okay, that book is probably <laughs> problematic like, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I was that's... like, hey, I'm like learning about racism. Yeah. And it's like, uh, anyway. But that's where, but that's where I think it's important. So the statue thing, I think, is is kind of relevant to this part of the conversation because the people who don't want the statues to come down uh, fall into two camps. They're straight up white supremacist, racist, neo Nazi. Uh, douchebags i'm gonna say mm -hmm. um i gotta keep it pg-13 right uh, <laughs> it's it's really difficult i want to swear <laughs> so bad on this podcast but it's okay um we can make nazi into a pejorative 
<laughs> well, how about I, we just start is. using we start using it as a as a swear word <laughs> yeah. instead of instead of other. I don't want to say Nazi that much. I mean, um, that's fair. That's fair. I and then there are the people who who are misguided in believing that history slash tradition are uh, sacred, right? Um, first of all, the history you've been taught is is racist uh, in its inception. I, I, and, and it's, it's, it's devious in, in that respect. I read a whole thing today, um, uh, from a Facebook post, uh, I, uh, that was basically going into the history of like what happened between, uh, the, uh, slavery being abolished and Jim Crow. And people like don't talk about that era. We kind of like everybody kind of talks about the era up to the Civil War, and then oh the the slaves are free, and then you know like there's a little bit of conversation around it around the immediate years after. But there's actually a big chunk of years in there where a lot of crazy stuff happened in America that that leads to the Republican Party and the Democratic Party switching sides essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it would be a whole thing to get into. So I'm not going to do that right now, but like, I'll just say to people like you need to go out and research this stuff uh, and, and learn more about that period of history and what happened when people uh, I, post slavery were trying to figure out like, okay, now what does America look like? And uh, because there weren't any laws specifically at the time that said that black people couldn't be elected officials, they started running for office and they started getting elected. And then the, and then white America's response, uh, particularly those, uh, uh, the, the, the Confederate losers, uh, their response was to just kill them. Like that was the response. And, and it was, it was like legal for various reasons because it was still, you have to think of the context. It was still kind of the wild West at the time. Right. So the laws were very different than they are now. Obviously everything has, has, has progressed since then. So like there, there are whole chunks of history that it's like have thinking, you watched 13th? Like, sorry, 13th. Have you watched 13th? Yet? No, I haven't watched Netflix it yet. Second. And I, and it, yeah. I, like I, it's one of those things that's like on my list that I got to do. It's difficult yeah. for me because, because that, that I don't have a lot of time, time where it's appropriate to watch, watch something that, like that right, right now yeah, 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 uh, yeah, with the good. kids. Um, and Cassie has not been going to sleep. <laughs> it's oh, been, dear. she's teething. So it's like a whole thing, oh. but, um, but it is definitely high up on my list of, of mm-hmm. things that I want to, that I want to watch. But that's like um, the, 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 the essence of that being like the 13th amendment saying that you could in you can you, slavery is legal for people that are convicted of crimes right yeah so it's um, like you shift slavery and slavery. so yeah like the, like all of that goes back to like there is all of this history that gets omitted or uh or or um i mean like the stuff that we talk about i think the most is probably the whitewashing of it and stuff like that it's like oh you know uh i uh, i uh, who, who who are the dudes that that the the two white dudes that uh, uh, man went from one side of the U.S. to the other side, but it was actually Sacagawea that that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, oh, come on, come on, Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark, yeah. Where yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, Lewis and Clark are heroes. And it's like, no, they're not. They, they, they're, they're, they were a couple of guys who wanted to make a profit, and they didn't do it. They had a, an indigenous person, an indigenous woman, <laughs> important okay. to the story. I actually be the one to lead them so it's like it, that's like the whitewashing stuff and i think that we all kind of we talk about that we don't talk about these these chunks of history that have been straight up omitted and stuff that i am ashamed to admit that i have just learned about in the last couple of weeks stuff like black wall street in tulsa oklahoma and everything that oh, happened oh that there. video like, is so great that woman it's the that Lindsay. i uh, I don't know her last name, but the woman that's basically talking about how like the we're really glad we're yeah. um, we should be grateful that all we're fighting for right now is equality, not revenge. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it, watch that video if you haven't yeah. watched the video yet, everybody. Um, but yes, that was my first understanding of Black Wall Street as well. Yeah, and so it's like like there's all of this stuff that they they um uh, is really recontextualizing a lot of things for me, 
Um, and, and I mean, like, obviously it's, I think, I, I, for, for us, it's, it's adding to our understanding of systemic racism in the, in the United States and North America and, and, and how it fits into the fabric of our culture. But, um, but like I said, I'm ashamed to admit that I, I did not know this stuff thinking that I'm a pretty smart guy that knows a lot of stuff. And it's like, there are these massive gaps. Um, so being proud of history is a stupid thing because it's mostly lies anyways. Uh, <laughs> yes, so much. <laughs> being proud of tradition, it, it's to me like tradition is a way of justifying bad behavior. Um, and I say that coming from uh, having worked uh, I, in in the church, uh, where I worked as a youth leader. For those who maybe haven't been following us for that long, um, I was I was a youth leader at, at uh, for my church, and you know, like uh, molding the minds of teenagers. And I I there's a lot of there's a lot of traditional stuff. I'm Anglican, I uh, so Anglican is a very traditional uh, uh, sect of Christianity. Uh, it's 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 kind of the second one <laughs> there's catholicism and then anglicanism is was like the first protestant christian religion so i uh, there's a lot of tradition there and tradition is important in some ways like i think that some of the songs that we sing <laughs> i like the traditional ones so totally a, a personal bias it doesn't really have any meaning um other than the fact that those are the songs that i like rather than the more contemporary stuff um but but people want to treat tradition like I, the word sacred comes up uh, a lot of the time. And I, I, it's like the Catholic Church. What's sacred in the Catholic Church is that women can't be priests. That's a tradition. I don't agree with that. <laughs> it's, it's a bad tradition. But people say right. it's a tradition. We've done this for thousands of years. Therefore, we cannot stop now. We cannot be challenged on this belief, right? Yeah. And and the the traditions of flying the Confederate flag, of celebrating Robert E. Lee and other uh, Confederate losers. Um, I'm going to keep using that phrase because uh, they are they 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 lost. Um, although again, that stuff that I was talking about before that's recontextualizing history for me. It's like, well, they lost that. It sounds like they lost the war, but really they just kind of lost that battle and it looked like like the 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 um who's the other side? <laughs> Jesus. I uh, the good guys. The north. Uh, One. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. I, that's what I wanted to say and it's not. Oh, what, good. We're Canadian. Uh, Give us a break. I don't, what is what were they called? Oh my god. The the north? Yeah. The Abraham Lincolns. The Wow, we did not study American history. No. Um, I, oh, and you know, fun fact about American history. Yeah. In Canada, it's called the American... What is it? Oh, what is it? Oh, what is it called? There's something different between, like, the Americans... Um, when they the when they separated from, from Britain, how, like, America calls it the War of Independence, and we call it the American Revolution. Yeah. Because we are still, like, like the colonies. Yeah. <laughs> So um, the, the term revolution is used. But anyway, <laughs> so so the, the Confederates lost that war and it seemed like Lincoln uh, won. But in reality, they just kind of bided their time and ended up winning in the end. But um, because they they hold all the power, the, the, the white Southerners hold all of the power in the United States. It's 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 ridiculous. And it's why the country oh, is in the state. That dude, it's in. yeah, I just I happen to have google in front of me yeah um uh it was fought between the confederate states of america and the united states of america so that's why we're the union (laughs) oh my god yeah it's the union it was the confederates versus the the ones sorry yes there you go we should record this earlier i I wouldn't i wouldn't have known that if you paid me money yeah like i didn't realize that that was um, like what they were called because i'm just like well you know the united states anyway sorry for so being all terrible. of that going back like the the idea of of you know like like it's like these statues need to be up for because they're part of history or because of traditions or whatever nonsense uh you want to use to justify 
uh, these uh, icons of white supremacy. Um, it does. It doesn't matter. Like that's it. I so for for me and and I think for Thunderquack, uh, I think that it's important that we look at it. If if you're gonna have a tradition, have a tradition of growing of of evolving of taking in new ideas of of admitting when you were wrong and made mistakes and learning from that stuff those like if you want to call something a tradition let's call that a tradition um so that maybe it has some weight to it um i would say that there are there are other uh, uh organizations and institutions that that is very much a part of their their tradition dude it's there's so ideology. much history we could like iconicize in yeah. statues that is just so much better for the and here's the thing that we could iconicize for being part of a more liberal and like 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 welcoming conversation and maybe in a hundred years those will no longer be relevant yep. and we'll have to grow and change and realize that we don't we learn as we go yeah and our alien it's, uh, overlords won't like our yeah. system of democracy. I think it, I I think the the most important thing in, as as part of that conversation is to just like never hold anything too sacred, right? Like it's it, nothing good can come from that. I I think that you have to be you have to be open to new ideas. You have to be to be uh uh it's the one place where this cancels out is intolerance but um it's that it's like the whole thing of like oh well if you're if the left is so tolerant how come they can't be tolerant of of nazis and it's like well because not the the whole nazi ethos is intolerance so you don't have to tolerate intolerance that's yeah. it's a that's a paradox like like sh shut up and, we've you know, talked about this we've talked about this before yeah. about in in canada how we don't have freedom of speech we have um, like you anti like hate speech laws. Yeah. So and that yeah. that's just like a difference. But hey, America though, I didn't know the amendments, and apparently people are talking today about the Third Amendment mm -hmm. because some state has decided to not let uh the like what's the military that got deployed this the, the National Guard the National Guard yeah they won't let them stay in hotels and it's actually like straight up a Third Amendment right yeah that you don't have to house soldiers and I'm kind of like. What is this Constitution America has, and why does it have all these random things? In it? And anyway. and and that that is one of those things that it, that everything kind of comes back to. Uh, a lot of the problems that America has, I think, are these the Constitution and the and these amendments, which it sounds it's it's counterintuitive to say that like the Constitution and the, and and the amendments to the Constitution are are the problem with America. Um, that stuff. I mean, they're also the good parts about America, but it's it's, it's the it's it's one of it's what it was great, founded like, dichotomies on. Dichotomies of life. Right? Yeah, it's it's the ideology that it was founded on. But but a like there's there's two parts to this. A that founding ideology. There's a reason why the amendments were added, right? Because they started and then they immediately went, "Ooh, we got to add some stuff in here." Like like we started from a good place. But let's uh, let's make sure that we're actually, you know, living up to these ideals. Uh, and as such, let's add a few amendments to this Constitution. It's a living document. Right. The other part of it is that. A lot like that tradition and history thing, this whole idea of the founders being. Godlike in stature, right, their faces are carved into the side of a mountain, it's, which is its own racist appropriation I, I, it, that's a whole other thing but uh, mount rushmore should just be turned back into rocks but i i like they, they were flawed they had flaws therefore the document that they wrote has flaws right but but america is so entrenched now in um in in christian especially right-wing christian ideology um and and i i i would say like the american christian christian ideology which is um that the word of god the the words that are in the bible were written by god himself via the people and not who wrote by the bible. not by flawed men and not, individuals not by who may have beings. gotten yeah. not may have gotten things wrong or things been lost in translation or things yeah. that were just and that 
that ideology transfers to the constitution it transfers to washington it transfers to all of all of those figures um because it is part of their culture in in the united states we're a little bit removed from that also we're not better i want to be super clear no. about that well, yeah. as canadians we like to post memes about how we're superior and that is stupid and it doesn't help the the conversation and it definitely uh erases uh and hides our marks of shame we don't have the problems with uh with with black people uh and 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 racism that that america does not on the same scale they certainly exist but it's not because one of America's only real export is culture and and we're one of the chief importers of it so we're affected by it obviously well and our, our racism is directed towards very different social groups yeah and, our and like, our yeah. uh, uh, our black eye when it comes to uh, uh, racism that that we try and hide that we shouldn't is the way that Canada treats indigenous people now like mm-hmm. flip it America also treats indigenous people horribly um, yeah it's a we, it, we're like it's a North is, American well, problem, but yeah. But one of the things that's kind of like annoying about Canada is that like Aboriginal peoples are very specifically called out in our. Yeah. Do we have a constitution? Is that what it's called? We have a charter of rights and freedoms. charter of rights and freedoms. There we yeah. go. I was like, I don't think it's a constitution, but in our charters of rights and freedoms, very differently than like like people of color and white people, like they're specifically supposed to have a lot of right. Anyways, yeah. there's a lot of racism in Canada and fun fact, linking stuff back to like nerdy things as we do on this podcast. One of like the biggest marks on like Canadian, like racism is something called the Komogata Maru. And yeah. I remember it because it sounds like the Kobayashi Maru, yeah. which is the star, the, star, the star Trek thing. But anyways, it's, uh, if you're, if you're interested in racism in, in Canada, the Komogata Maru is a, is this yeah. like terrible mark. Same with like, in, you know, like, um, racist, like, uh, what are the schools? Uh, residential schools. Residential school racist. Yeah. I was just calling them racist schools. <laughs> but like, re- you're not, you're not schools. wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah. Residential schools yeah. and Japanese internment camps. And oh my yeah. gosh, we have so many black marks on our history in, yeah. in Canada. Um, Anyways, sorry, I you were talking about something different, and I totally just decided to talk about. But I can keep talking about nerdy links to no, to, it like, all history like because this I is all, it's all part of the same thing. But we did we went poli sci on that, and we need to bring it back to <laughs> we need to bring it back to the conversation about because uh, I want to wrap this up so that we can go into our other topic. Okay, well then, can I wrap it up by saying yeah, it has it took me so everybody's saying this defund the police thing yeah that they've come to agree with it over the course of like different times and i don't know i feel like when i first read it it took me a day to like understand what the conversation was yeah and i'm like cool i get it but it took me a week to sort of be like yes defund the police yeah. and i just had this great rev like revelation last night when i was watching one of my like go-to like when the world is burning and i need to just like you know, this is what this is what art is good for is that you have these movies that just sort of speak to you and just make you like feel good. And I sat down in my chair and I like had my glass of wine and I watched Ever After. I really love this movie. It's very cute. <laughs> but it's a movie that takes place in this like fictional world, but where the French aristoc- aristocracy exists. And it's like this thing that while I was watching it, I couldn't, first of all, think about how close everybody was standing next to each other. But the second thing that I thought about was how the French aristocracy just ceased to exist because people decided to kill everybody in the French aristocracy. And they created a whole new way of being. We are not any different. Like, you can change the systems that you live in instantaneously. All it takes is enough people to want to change it. And hey, I'm not saying democracy was the right choice. Those people in the french revolution probably could have chosen something better but hey you know democracy was what they got and from that we've gotten laws and we've gotten charters of rights and freedoms and constitutions and with that we've gotten the police they don't exist because they always have existed and always should exist they Mm -hmm. exist because it's a function of our current society and we as society have the ability to change what society is so anyways watching ever after and having my lovely glass of wine, it also made me realize that I don't think I would love to know if anybody is watching any sort of pop culture in the same way that they used to. Like, I just don't think it's 
possible anymore for me to like watch things yeah. and not think about the state of the world. So anyways, sorry, you can wrap it up now by talking no, about whatever. It, you it, it's, about, it's, like, so I, I think what you said is important because it's, it's, I think what is happening right now, the conversation right now, it's inescapable. Um, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I think it's important for us to um, not necessarily have a plan or a strategy uh, or even something concrete, but just um, uh, part of our ideology as Thunderquack um, is is obviously, if you've listened to this podcast, if you listen to Quiver, if you know Amanda and I at all, you know that this stuff is important to us. You know that um, that 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 we want to be involved, um, and and what like whatever that ends up meaning, right? It and. It needs to be an ongoing part of Thunder Quack and a part of the fabric of the podcast um, and a part of the fabric of the organization. Again, I don't know exactly what that means, and I don't think it needs to mean one or two or three specific things. It's it's more about making sure that it's just something that we're thinking about and something that we're living up to on a regular basis. Um, I, I would ask uh, that those who feel available for it, not not trying to put anything on anybody in the listening audience because I don't want to do that. But but for anybody out there who is listening, who feels like they want to contribute to the conversation, to 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 do that, to talk to us, uh, that the, the channels of communication are open as they've always been through Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, email, however you want to get in contact with us. Um and to hold us accountable, like, like I, I, we are going to screw up. We probably did tonight in some way. We said something or, or got something wrong. And maybe it was a, was a, a, a fact. Maybe, maybe it we was. We offended the United States of America by not understanding your yeah. civil war. Um, maybe we offended America, uh, Can- fellow Canadians by, by uh, lumping ourselves in with America so much. It, it, like it's it's kind of impossible not to piss somebody off these days i uh, and i think that that's just the virtue of being able to communicate with I such a say, large yeah, audience but it's not as if it hasn't happened through all of history it's just yeah. that now more people can hear you and more people can disagree with you so fast yeah. so um <laughs> all of that to is said to say like i i i want us to be committed uh, and I want it to be a real thing. So um, open to ideas. Some of the things that I've been thinking about, I, I, they range from, I think, maybe a little bit more on the nose and tacky, like having segments on, on the podcast where we talk about stuff. Uh, where we actually like make a point to talk about stuff, which feels to me like it's a little bit forced. Um, regular charitable donations which is a weird thing because you guys are kind of charitably donating to us <laughs> so we'd be turning around and donating your money to something else but but thinking of it less in like us taking your money and giving it away but more of a this is something that we as a community decide on um and uh and it might not always be the same thing it might we might we might rotate that um through different causes but knowing like hey you know some of the money that you're giving us on patreon is actually going into this ongoing thing um that we're deciding as a community here's where we want to put our money this month here's what we want to do next month that sort of thing so that's an idea um i (laughs) this is this is one that's a little bit more difficult and and is is um I, I don't know. It's, it's, it, it, it has potential to do a lot of good, but it also has potential to really change things a lot. And that's bringing on another host. Um, but that's, like I said, like that comes, that's, that's probably the most complicated one because I think well, that you and I have a rhythm and it's a whole thing, but, but we are two white be, people yeah. talking to each other on a regular basis. Um, yeah. and that's not there, necessarily helpful in a lot of this stuff. So, or is there it, could be, another podcast that doesn't involve Amanda right. and I, that they, 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 we use the platform to amplify somebody else, um, which I think is the better way to go about doing that. But it's, you know, like, like I said, this is all for discussion. None of these are solutions. And I don't think that it's any one of these things. I don't think that it's all of these things. I think it's it like, I think that we need to, to, as a community come together and, and determine 
what does Thunderquack mean in the scheme of of progressing these um, these movements? And and it's not just Black Lives Matter. It's that's obviously the one that we're talking about right now. That's the that's sort of the most prevalent. But but one of the other things that, that Amanda and I talked about before we started recording is like obviously uh, it's it's June. It's Pride. Um, that is another cause that is very important to us. Um, and and what's happening in the United States right now is uh, atrocious. And I think that a lot of American citizens agree with that 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 this these rollbacks of of rights for for uh gay uh trans people like the like the the man it's disgusting that that the current administration made a point of saying that medical professionals can ref- have the right to refuse helping a person because they perceive them as they don't even like you don't even have to know. You don't have to have proof. You can just go, that guy looks gay. I'm just gonna let him bleed out. I don't have to help. And it's like, no, you're a doctor. You have a Hippocratic oath to do no harm. Like, first do no harm. That should supersede, hopefully for most doctors, that does supersede whatever the government is saying about rights and legal, blah, blah, blah. But man, whole other thing whole other topic that we'll talk about at a later time but can, can I, but like I that's like say... another another cause that that when i say like it's not like there are so many things that we need to be making more of a point to contribute to that we need to be better allies and 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 um more active in um and, and keeping the conversation going not letting it be a thing that happens and then dies down and and then comes back in six years when something else uh, catches the media wave yeah. and becomes a, a, a movement again, right? Like that's not a good, that's not a good excuse for us to be having this conversation right now. It's not something that we should have stopped talking about. Yeah. I want to speak to just really quickly some of the things you just said, because for me, that is like, I fully would love to open up space on the podcast. If there are people with viewpoints other than ours, like that you can speak from a place of, of truth, um, I would love to find ways to support you to be able to do that. Uh, but we're not going to like target. We're not going to like reach out and be like, hey, you fit a demographic. You yeah. should come on our podcast. So it really is a thing that if you're even like vaguely interested in talking about something, please <clears throat> reach out yeah. and, and, and you, you'll have support on our podcast. Um, the other thing I do want to just speak to because you've just sort of mentioned it is like like gay rights and trans rights and, and, and the healthcare system and, and these being things in, in Vancouver. Our pride is actually in August. It's this sort of like odd just due to the circumstances of our particular city. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's interesting that there, but Pride Month being this like obviously uh, outside of Vancouver very important conversation and for all this atrocities to be happening something I do just think that people should be aware of and it was something that I didn't realize my mom didn't know about this my mom was a nurse and my mom didn't know that there was a, a ban on like gay men donating blood yeah. and I thought that that was really interesting that like people just don't realize the discrimination that already exists in a system and I will say the Canadian um, blood services did change I think in 2019 where they changed the um the system so that uh, it's no longer it was like they they reduced the waiting period to like three months yeah. so um there's people that like you know through quarantine or whatever if they've been celibate they now can like go and donate blood and it's just like sort of this interesting sort of weird discriminatory practice that is just part of what people in my life have dealt with their whole lives that just sort of says somehow this life-saving like ability to 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 contribute to society and do something you're not able to do because of your lifestyle and that is just such a such a terrible and it makes it's like what anyways so there's so many things and for that to be just like this huge conversation in the states that like is happening on top of all of these other atrocities is just it's worth pointing out anyways cool okay um let's cut it off there (laughs) yes we're gonna we're gonna so take a break. Things. We're gonna you guys are gonna listen to some or probably skip through. Like let's be realistic, yeah. uh, skip through some ads. Um, and I'm gonna eat some dino sours. Yeah, and then we're gonna come back and we're going we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about some nerdy stuff. We're gonna get yes. some geeky pop culture stuff. Okay, we are back from the break and uh, we're gonna we're gonna take an opportunity in the second half of this episode. Um, we're not going to steer completely away from the, from the first topic. 
um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some geeky stuff. But I think what we want to do is we want to highlight um, some pop culture uh, geeky stuff um, that we love uh, that that is specifically from uh, creators that that are people of color. Um, so there are a couple of obvious ones that I'll just that I'll just get out of the way. The, the, I think the easiest one to go to that we could just talk about and, 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 you know, pat ourselves on the back and say that we did a good job is black Panther. Right. Um, I think we all like Ryan Coogler directed that. Um, uh, and obviously it's a, it's a Marvel movie with a, a, a predominantly black cast. Um, but, uh, that feels like it's too easy. <laughs> Everybody's seen black <laughs> Panther. We're not really, we're not really uh, amplifying anything with that. Um, I I'll start off though with a series that that I know that some of our listeners um, are definitely into, um, but uh, but but maybe maybe not everybody has has heard of. Um, there's a series called The Boondocks, which I uh, which is from the early two thousands. Um, it was created by Aaron Magruder, um, and uh, it is. I, oh man, how to describe this? I, it's, I feel like I've heard of it. It's about, it's, it's about, it's about like, I basically about these two kids, uh, a 10 year old and an eight year old, although they don't act like that on the show that, um, I, I, they, they, so here's the description after the moving the family from Chicago South side to the safety of suburban Woodcrest, AKA the boondocks granddad hopes to ignore the grandkids and enjoy his golden years in peace. But the kids have different plans, torturing each other and provoking others in the neighborhood. Uh, no matter how wild they get, Huey and Riley are no match for their eccentric, for the eccentric elderly man. So like, that's kind of the sitcom setup of it. It's the, they're kind of like moving from this, it's this black family, moving from uh, the south side of Chicago uh, uh, into the suburbs, right? Into, like, rich, affluent suburbs. But that's just sort of the setting to... Um, I, it's it's a backdrop for, for subjects, for a lot of stuff that we're talking about right now um, in, 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 in sort of the current pop culture space. Uh, not pop culture, I guess, just culture, but of um, uh, what I was talking about before of like of, of history being whitewashed, history being uh, uh, omitting important things about about black history and all of that sort of stuff that like, you know, uh, I, the, the, the problematic uh, role that that even like like white allies can play in some stuff and, and racism in America and stuff like that. It's actually it's a really um I think it's a really digestible way of opening yourself up to some of these, these perspectives um, because it is, it is from the black perspective uh, specifically the African-American perspective, but it's, it's a comedy. It's funny. It's a cartoon and it's got like a little bit of an anime vibe to it, even though it's, it's an American produced show. Um, so it's like like there it's got ridiculous fight scenes and stuff like that. It I'm going to be blunt. It's going to make some white people uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> because there is there is uh, uh some language that I think that I I get flustered just thinking about talking about it because I don't want to say the wrong thing, right? Um so, but but I think that that's important. That's the like when, yeah. when people say like like as 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 white people specifically as white allies like we need to we need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I yeah. think that sitting by yourself in a room watching a cartoon that is going to challenge you and make you feel uncomfortable in that way, it is a good way to dip your toe into the water and to start educating yourself on some of these some of these perspectives that you may have been ignorant to. Um, so yeah, uh, boondocks. And on top of that, uh, it is hilarious. It's, it's so smartly written. Um, it's sort of like, it's, it's nothing like Rick and Morty, but if I'm going to compare it to something that I think is a little bit more, uh, in the pop culture zeitgeist, it's that same sort of level of intelligent discourse wrapped in sort of absurd cartoon humor. Um, 
but it's a little bit more anime than it is uh, uh, cartoon cartoon. Um, and uh, like I said, it's so smartly written. The animation is is excellent. It's top tier. And the, the vocal performances are some of like if you've watched boondocks like there's so there are so many quotable moments and like it's just kind of got that it just kind of has that 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 rhythm that vibe of of a very like quotable show but i don't know that it is it has actually been as widely seen as as like i know in 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 a couple of my bubbles it's definitely like if you bring up the boondocks people know what you're talking about but i guarantee that other bubbles it's like they've never even heard of it um so that's that would be my first recommendation do you have something amanda um well okay i have you just made me think of and i i tend to sometimes talk about books when we're talking about pop Mm. culture and i know that that's not necessarily what everybody is everybody's jam but um in terms of like like listening to stuff where you're kind of like the language is not necessarily something that is going to sit well with like white audiences i read a i read a book called queenie um it's by candace cardi williams um and it's uh there's like two things that are hard for me to get into is like the the protagonist is um a black woman and it's also british and sometimes i have like i was talking to my friend like sometimes just british books because they're so close yet a slightly like removed from my own experiences Mm -hmm. that just like the british the britishisms in them sometimes take me out of it but anyways queenie was it's really fantastic but like a lot of it deals with um basically it's this what this like this she's so jamaican a jamaican british woman um uh but she talks very explicitly about her like sex life in the book and specifically like her like how she like can't really have sex with black men and like the her experiences with like w- like with white men and it's it's sort of it's this really sort of interesting and visceral like exploration of being like this 25 year old woman dealing with your own sexuality and and like you're like dealing with like your white middle class friends and it was this great perspective that i would i like it just was a book that was not mm-hmm. in the realm of like stuff that i would normally like pick up and read and so it's it was totally this like great uh, way to sort of experience something that was a little bit outside of it. But that, yeah, I think some, some stuff that isn't like made for white audiences are like on purpose. They're going to make you feel uncomfortable. I think that's still worth, it's still worthwhile to like engage with and read with them. But the yeah. other, the actual like pop culture that I haven't watched yet, but I keep, because mostly I just don't know where I can watch it in Canada is um Donald Glover's Atlanta, right? Like, because oh, it's Donald on FX. Glover, it's on FX. Is it on FX? Yeah. I don't see it, and I don't know how to, like, like oh, man, is that a that channel was so, I have to pay for? God, that was so right in front of my face, and I didn't even think about it. Yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Atlanta if, is, like, the, the best. Yeah. If, like, if you want to know, like, like, specifically right now in this moment what mm-hmm. black people in America, uh, or at least, at least I, I, like, Donald Glover's uh, uh, perspective on it, of, of what they're mm-hmm. facing... Uh, I, Atlanta is phenomenal. I, yeah, man, I think he what was a like show. the first. So he he like was the first black man to ever win like a directing Emmy or something for comedy oh, yeah. or something for that. So it's like it's very like groundbreaking. Anyways, and I I'm thinking of Donald Glover a lot right now because I'm actually I was actually messaged you about this. I'm rewatching Community right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, and got to the point where they like lost Donald Glover, and I'm kind of like, what is the point of continuing to watch the show without Donald Glover? Um, because I love in that show how, like, my first introduction to Donald Glover is this, like, nerdy, awkward dude from Community, but then, like, everything he's done since has been so, like, visceral and raw and, like, really just sort of powerful, and anyways, I really like Childish Gambino as well, like, his his music is fantastic. Anyways, I highly, I highly recommend yeah. uh, Donald Glover as an artist um, doing things that are really great, and, and very like like he's he's highly he's like very highly praised for the work he does from an artistic standpoint not only is he talking about really important things in his art um but he also is doing it in such an artistic way and i just yeah i i think that he's a great um a great creator so absolutely yeah um yeah fx is the one thing like it's so hard because uh we just we just shut our cable off uh last month so um because we just don't watch it, right? So, the one thing that I'm missing is FX because the, it's not part of one of the the streaming services. So, it, but what Crystal and I have said, what we, had, we talked about is like we're paying like sixty or seventy dollars a month for cable when it's like 
how many shows are we actually watching on cable? Maybe like four right. or five. Right. Over the course of a year, right? And it's like we don't need to be watching them all as they're coming out necessarily. But right. like even like in a month, if three new shows start start up um, and we want to watch them every week, we'll just go on Google and just buy the season. Right. Because it's a one-time fee of like, oh, I'll pay $60 at the beginning in September or October, 60 or $75 or something like that, depending on how much the season is. And we'll just have, we'll like, we'll get new episodes every week. Right. Yeah, that's fair. And then yeah. as opposed to paying $60 every month for, for right. the, for the three or four episodes that maybe air that month, like so dumb. So that's with something like Atlanta, it's like, yeah, I don't have effects, but uh, I don't know if there's I don't know if the there's a new season. Yeah, I don't think there is right now. But um, I like I think I'm caught up. But um, whenever that next season drops, a hundred percent, I will. It just says 2020 right now. Um, but that's confusing. Episode one of season three says 2021, but episode yeah, one like- of four says 2020. So I think it's probably been pushed, but. Yeah, it's um, probably like coming out soon. So yeah, I uh, yeah, like I'll just like I will one hundred percent just buy the season for Atlanta and watch it as right. it comes out. Um, right. Because you know, if you know that you're gonna love a show, or if you know that you're invested in a show at least, because um, we 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 did the math on it. We were like, what are we even watching on cable? You know that, I mean, that makes a lot. Once of, Arrow a was lot of... done, right? <gasps> Dude. Yeah. Sorry. I'm also looking at I'm also looking at other things and I didn't realize that this create there's a creator for another show. Like have you re- have you watched Mr. Robot? No, I haven't watched Mr. Robot. Okay. Anyways, I just uh I didn't realize. So the show creator Sam Esmail, I am not sure how to pronounce it. Apologies. It's like uh Egyptian Arabic. Uh mm-hmm. so but anyways, he's married to Emmy Rosam and I didn't know that. I like Emmy Rosam. But anyways, sorry, but that was that's cool. another that's a, that's an, but it's like another show that's like made yeah. by like people of color, right? Yeah. So. But. Um Yeah, I oh man, I had another one and then and then I lost it because because we, we started, started talking, talking about, about Atlanta. Atlanta. What yeah. was it? I don't know. I can talk about another one though while we go. Yeah. Uh, oh no, sorry. Then, I just Oh, yeah, you do. I yeah. I've got it. Um Good. This is not recent, <laughs> although he's got <laughs> recent movies. But I uh, if you've never gone out of your way to watch Spike Lee movies, uh, do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. do it. I, I, yeah. Spike Lee is is uh, such an incredible director, and he has such a great uh, uh, catalog of movies. But, but, I mean, like it's uh, that is another one of those obvious ones. But I would say, like, start with, uh, with do the right thing. Um, and uh, and then go from there, um, and you don't necessarily have to watch everything that he's ever uh, directed, but um, but man, because he's directed a lot of stuff, but uh, and a lot of shorts as well as as TV and stuff like that. But uh, I but yeah, man, Spike Lee, like like Black Klansman is is a more recent movie of his um, with Kylo Ren with Kylo Ren in it. So <laughs> uh, if you haven't, wa- I haven't watched Black Klansman yet, and it. It's another one of those ones that it's like, it's difficult to. You can't necessarily watch it with your children. Yeah, um, but uh, I, I, and I didn't have access to it until recently. So, but now I've because I've got all the HBO stuff, I can watch it. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, Black Klansman for sure is at the is at the top of the list for that. Um, but I, I, I watched do do the right thing in film school and, uh, and, I. Uh, uh, I would have been uh, 17 or 18, maybe 19 at the time. And, uh, and it definitely had an effect on me. I was definitely like, okay, this, this is definitely stuff that I did not learn in high school <laughs> growing yeah, up in, yeah, yeah. in uh, Richmond, a suburb of Vancouver, and then in Penticton especially. Um, <laughs> yep. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely check out Spike Lee's whole his whole filmography uh, if you want to get into some stuff cool what, what else you got 
Um, so it's actually more so I'm deciding to drop this because it's by like like there's a Vancouver creator involved in this. Um yeah. uh, who and she just did um so the the television series that I um first produced was called The Switch. It was a um a sitcom uh starring and and uh made by uh transgender individuals. And uh the uh director on that was Jem Jem Gerard and she is fantastic. She's this like a wonderful queer director that um speaks like does a lot uh for um in the community and and anyways she just directed a series called vagrant queen um which um stars uh adrian ray i believe is her name her name is like spelt really cool it's like a d r i y a n but anyways it's just really cool to see like this like black woman like starring in, like mm. being like the vagrant queen in this um so it's like a sci-fi series but i don't know how much traction it's got like it just finished like it just the first season just aired and i think it just finished and i don't know if they're renewing it um but i would love more people to watch it because it's kind of cool uh to like see that kind of like just also cool like kick-ass ladies being in positions of like prominence in not only behind the camera but also uh, like yeah. on screen uh, which is awesome so cool i will springboard off your canadian recommendation and say if you haven't watched kim's convenience i think we've talked about kim's convenience before on the yes. podcast but yes. if you haven't watched it i uh, you're doing yourself a disservice um yeah i i uh, based on a play um but it's about a a, a, a korean family in toronto that own a convenience store and i i again like it's, that's just the backdrop but it's really just about this family and sort of their uh their their family drama and it's very much about about um about being korean in canada like it's uh it's that's a that's a part of the fabric of the show um and it's a uh, it's a and it's super funny and it's great and and uh, i can't recommend it highly enough Awesome. Dude, I didn't even realize this. Vagrant Queen has black queer characters on TV. Even more reasons to watch it. Sorry, I just, I, I was I was reading more about Vagrant Queen. Again, it's a sci-fi series, so I'm not quite sure where to watch it in Canada, but yeah, um, very cool. But yeah, Kim's Convenience, it also space, has, but... who, who does it have as Simu Lu? Is that how you pronounce uh, yeah, it's, name? Yeah, Simu like, Lu, tweeting. who yeah. is going to be Shang-Chi next yeah. year. His, so movie got, his movie got pushed because everybody's movies got pushed, but... Uh, mm -hmm. he had the best attitude around it. It was so great because yeah. when everybody yeah. else's got pushed, it was like, oh yeah, you know, like our movie, we're going to move to this date or whatever. He was like, this is awesome. I just went from a February movie or February, March or whatever to being yeah. the movie that kicks off the summer blockbuster. Yeah. It's season. so cool. Yeah. Um, I'm really so excited. he definitely <laughs> like made lemon lemonade out of those lemons. Um, yeah. Yeah. About his movie being pushed. But uh, yeah, man, I man, I cannot wait for Shang Chi. I'm so that is the the next MCU movie that I'm the most excited about, um, yeah. because I love him from from Kim's Convenience. It's 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 he's he's yeah. so good on that show. Um, I would say probably one of the biggest standouts, um, and uh, yeah. and uh, and I think he's going to do an awesome job in Shang Chi. So cool. Uh, Ooh uh also another shout out for stuff that's made in vancouver like a lot of my friends have been on the man in the high castle i haven't actually watched the series as well um but uh if you uh, like haven't uh aren't like familiar with the conceit um like there's a lot of uh, like asian representation in lead roles on man cool. in the high castle because it takes place you know in a parallel universe in which nazi germany and the empire of japan have taken over the united states yeah and so there's like um who is it mayumi um, who's this fantastic um, vocal um, woman in Vancouver who uh, she plays the Empress of Japan, I think, on it. And she's just been doing such a great job to, I will say, call out the intense racism in uh, MOWs that are being shot in Vancouver right now. So uh, there, it's just really awesome to see um, these kick-ass, again, kick-ass ladies working in, like, these series yeah. that are getting a broad audience but also doing the work like on the ground with the creators and the like movers and shakers in the communities that are like creating content to like have their voices heard and and yeah. anyways she is she is uh, sorry, so fantastic just, and i want to i want to yeah. i want to clarify what you sort of dropped and moved on from on that so <laughs> mow means movie of the week oh what, yes what you're sorry. specifically talking about <laughs> is um 
I mean, like, not to put too fine a point on it, but but Hallmark movies, Hallmark yes. Christmas movies, mostly. <laughs> um, it's a big, big business in Vancouver. Um, we're, we're one of the like main places where they shoot that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, like, just just sort of scroll through the the catalog of Hallmark movies, and you'll see it's a lot of white ladies uh mm-hmm. dating white guys that's that's mm-hmm. it's uh it's ro- they're they're bad romantic comedies for the most part um and occasionally weird suspense thrillers um and occasionally the both at the same time um yes i have actually literally been paid to be in a weird like romantic suspense thriller movie of the week like it like so many people in vancouver are in these movies and it's like this huge industry and the anyways the reason i bring it up so again mayumi yoshida is the name of this this uh wonderful actress uh in in uh who's doing these awesome things but but basically like speaking out about like no longer agreeing to go out for roles of like receptionist or like so like the diversity being so fake and that they actually the reason it really got brought up in vancouver right now is because there was this white male writer who was uh interviewing for a job uh writing for hallmark and he was explicitly told in the interview that they wouldn't let him write queer characters or have interracial relationships in the scripts that he was writing and so um i don't know what the name of the company is and obviously i'm not gonna like say the name of the company but it's like a pervasive issue and the problem is that hallmark itself is not going to say that they're racist but the problem is when you're a contracting company and you're selling things to hallmark what do you think hallmark's going to do they're going to buy the whitewashed garbage yeah and so these companies are like pressured to do that even though the stupid like parent corporations get to say that they're diverse because they're like oh like we it's, we don't explicitly yeah. like say that we're not allowed to do that but you're not going to get the money if you don't like conform to these terrible ideologies and it's actually it's it's, yeah. it's it's actually really similar to the the problems in the toy industry with mm. girls toys versus boys toys when you walk into a toys r us if you can because you can't in the states but the toy aisle whatever right. and you look and and the boys uh, the the girls aisle is pink it's pink with maybe right. a couple of splashes of purple and maybe a baby blue or a, or a you know a, a, a pastel green here and yellow here and there right you walk into the boys aisle it's every color in the rainbow right like it's whatever it, it's whatever they want it to be and and like Star Wars for example Hasbro who makes toys for Star Wars uh, predominantly there's a bunch of companies that do but uh, Hasbro's kind of kind of the biggest offender um, they will basically like short pack or not even put female characters in rotation. I, uh, I, because they assert that, that boys don't want to buy girl action figures. They don't want to buy Ray. They don't want to buy princess Leia. They want Darth Vader and they want Luke Skywalker. And that's basically all they want. And so when you look at the shelf, almost every wave there's a new Darth Vader figure. There are so many different Darth Vader figures. It's ridiculous how many times they've put out Darth Vader because he sells. Right. Um, but like they, like they, they they never put out new figures for, for a lot of the female characters. Um, certainly like the side characters, some of them have never even gotten figures. Um, and it's it's so bad that that at one point they when uh, the Force Awakens Monopoly set came out, Ray wasn't even in the Monopoly set as one of the Monopoly figurines that you could use. I remember you. She's the main that. character yeah, of terrible. the movie. Yeah, yeah. Right. She's the main character of the sequel trilogy, but Hasbro was worried that that people wouldn't want. Um. Well, they wouldn't want to buy a Monopoly game because, yeah, you know, because they wanted it to be these specific characters. Then there's only you won't, well, we only do six pieces or whatever for Monopoly, right? And it's like, well, just throw in three more pieces. Who cares? Um, so eventually they buckled and they and they put out a, a new version of it with Ray, and it was like a big deal on the box and stuff like that. Like they were very uh, mm-hmm. I, I, apologetic maybe even a little bit more than they needed to be 
Um, it it didn't look good, is what I mean. But yeah, um, well, I mean, I remember like doing a whole like I I did like a whole um conversation about that or what was it paper or speech or lecture or something at like a at like a women in animation like thing about yeah. the animation industry and the toy industry and like boy versus girl content and yeah it's a big pervasive thing but so the like media the, is the bleh. yeah the point of bringing that up is and to bring it back to what you were saying is that like there are these pervasive ideas that the 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 buying audience quote unquote doesn't want x they just want white protagonist uh boy girl heterosexual right and it's like it's that stuff sells because it's the like the 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 stats are skewed like that (laughs) we're told that that stuff sells yeah it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because that's all there is to buy Mm -hmm. so like little black kids and little asian kids and and girls who want to be superheroes they have to buy that stuff because it's all that there is right so like a movie like spider-verse comes out and it's such a big deal because the whole message of that movie we just watched it last week actually um uh because car wanted to watch it uh and the whole like i in the midst of everything else that's going on i'm watching that movie and i was getting like I think a little bit unnecessarily emotional Um, because like at the end miles has the whole speech of like, like, Oh, like I, you know, I'm Spider-Man. Anybody can wear the mask in case you haven't been paying attention. That's, that's the whole thing. Right. And it's like that, that message is so, um, it's so important and it's such a great message and it's such a great, it's exactly how Stan Lee felt and it's exactly what he would have wanted uh, uh, Spider-Man to stand for right now. So it's just, yeah, I'm getting emotional talking about it um, because it's Man, not, it's not watched, just about watching watch Into the Spider-Verse. Oh watch Into God. the Spider-Verse. So great. I yeah. don't think that this audience needs to be told to go watch <laughs> Into the Spider-Verse. Just yeah. go watch it again. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, cause even like for Kara, it, like she loves Spider-Man and it's turning out that Cassie also loves Spider-Man. I think there's something about the red and the blue with the big white eyes that that it just like to to little kids it just speaks to them. There's something about that iconography that just connects, but nice. Um I uh, I mean like you know you came with us to Spider-Verse. Like Kara was oh, yeah, all yeah, about yeah. that movie. Yeah, um and loves it. Spider-Man, but it, I love that the message of that is that you've got this diverse the diverse group of spider people uh because when you look at that at that that team you've got miles who is uh black puerto rican you've got gwen who's a girl Mm -hmm. (laughs) spider-man and Mm -hmm. uh you've got uh uh, penny parker who is uh who's asian right so Mm -hmm. she's japanese i think i i'm pretty sure um so a Japanese American, but I, I, yeah, like it, it, that movie just sort of like, uh, there's, and then you have a character that's a pig, a cartoon pig played by John Mulaney. So let's say that you, that it's a white pig. Um, okay. and then, and then Peter Parker and Peter Parker, who are both, both white, uh, Jake Johnson and, and Nicholas Cage respectively. But so and but half the of other that Peter team, Parker. The Sorry, and the other Peter Parker, yes, played by Chris Pine. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So, so definitely four out of seven Spider Mans are still <laughs> white guys. So we still have some work to do. But actually, let me even it up because the end of the movie, if you stick around for the post credits, at the very end, Miguel O'Hara is there, played by mm-hmm. Oscar Isaac, uh, uh, a Latino character. So, Latino actor playing Latino character. So. Um, and he's going to be a, one of the main ones in the next Spider-Verse. So, uh, which just always, every time I watch it, it fills me with so much joy because you get all the way through that incredible, perfect movie. And then you get to the end and they're like, yeah, by the way, the next one, uh, one of the best Spider-Mans played by one of the best actors. Uh, and look forward to that. So <laughs> it makes me so, so, so happy uh, that he's going to be. Uh, Spider-Man 2099 for those who who don't know the Spider-Verse as well as others. I I definitely am one of those people. Yeah, no. That's why I explain it. 
I, I know it's great. I, half of the time when I'm explaining it to the audience, I'm really just explaining it for Amanda. <laughs> it's true. I like it. I appreciate I, it. My I friend. and I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make the leap uh, from Spider-Man over to Superman, and highlight a book that I just read last week. Um, that that got. It didn't get. I mean, like I I knew about it, but I definitely was pushed to to pick it up and read it, um, from a, a podcast uh, uh, with Greg Miller uh, uh, last week uh, on kind of funny. They have a show called uh, We Have Cool Friends where they 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 bring on uh, just cool people and do interviews and whatever. And they had um, uh, Jean Luen Yang uh, on uh, for the second time uh, specifically to talk about. Uh, uh, Superman smashes the clan and I uh, that book I read I sat I read it cover to cover um, and it it it's so good it's such a perfect Superman story the art is unbelievably good it's it's so perfect um, and uh, it is it is my ideal Superman story it's it's it has everything that 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 I wanted to. And then specifically right now, it's such a, it's such a relevant story to tell with that character. Um, and it's, it, it actually, it doesn't even focus. Superman's not the main character in it. Uh, the main character in it is actually, uh, a, a young Chinese girl, uh, who, who they move from Chinatown into like downtown, not downtown Metropolis, but like they're kind of in, in a suburb or whatever, but into Metropolis proper. Um, and it's a big deal. And, and it, it sort of, it takes place in the 1940s. It's not, it's not a contemporary story, but it's also, it's, it's DC comics. So it's kind of timeless in that way. Like it where like, there's definitely some technology stuff where it's like, that doesn't track with 1940s tech, but that's fine. Um, because they're bad guys and it's sci-fi and Superman's there. So, um, but he is sort of, uh, uh, he is definitely his, his inner monologue is present in the story. So he is definitely a, a central character. It's not like he's just observed or something like that, but the story is propelled by, by, uh, uh, this family, um, and, uh, and their experiences and, and, uh, and it kind of revolves around that. It's so good. Um, it it instantly went on the shelf with with my other favorite Superman stories, um, alongside uh, uh, Superman for All Seasons and Superman All Star, or All Star Superman, I should say, um, volumes one and two. So it's like it's up on the shelf. And if I can get it in, like it's it's sort of it's actually in a format uh, with a, a sort of a new. Um, like publishing arm that that dc comics is doing for younger readers uh for like sort of the middle grade to teenager like young adult um uh, audience um but so it's the format's a little bit different from most comics it's sort of it's a little bit shorter but more it's more square it's not quite a square but it's more square than a traditional comic book um and they're more it's actually like kind of three graphic novel volumes collected um into like this 230 i think it's 230 pages to maybe 270 pages i uh, story it but it's so good um and if they ever do like a premium format like if they ever blow it up to a bigger size hardcover i will buy it instantly to put on my shelf um and to have it because it's such a great story um and and it's such perfect Superman with him. It it relates a lot of like this stuff that this family and this and this young girl are dealing with to the fact that Superman's an alien and that like I don't want to give too much of it away, but just to sort of tease it, there's the idea of like Superman back in the 1930s and 40s. He was his powers were different, right? Like he it, they kind of added to him as he went, and then when they rebooted in the 80s, he was sort of um it was sort of all brought together into the classic superman modern superman that we know right um but originally like he couldn't fly he leaped tall buildings in a single bound so when the story starts he he doesn't fly he can but he's choosing not to and there's this specific turning point in the story where where he he sort of realizes he's sort of forced to realize through the story that like he's holding back because he's afraid of what people will think of him he's afraid of being 
of people being afraid of him but but even more than that he's afraid of being on the outside he's been living his entire life trying to blend in and just be normal just be normal clark kent right like like that 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 it's it's that he's not doing that as a secret identity but that it's like he's that persona is to protect him from being othered right Right. because he can pass as a human as a and and more than that as a as a white guy like you know uh and so he's sort of taking advantage of that privilege and that and the story revolves around that um like superman's arc in the in the story revolves around that which i think is just we talk about it all the time we sound like broken records but genre storytelling is one of the most accessible ways to tell this type of story without being too overt and getting the idea into your head with a character that you love like superman and going like like this it it's about his white fragility to a certain degree um and him using his privilege to get away with not not having to confront that he's different and that he is actually an outsider not embracing who he is not embracing his heritage not embracing where he comes from and there is like a it's 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 just it's really cool how it plays with all that and i don't think that you would get that with a white author with a white writer uh you get that because because gene Luen yang is uh chinese uh american and and uh, i mean he he's talks himself and i i would also recommend go listen to the podcast where he talks about it himself get it from him not from filtered through me but um right i he talks about it about the you know like like his his perspective growing up in america and i think like that informs so much of the story um and it's actually based on a on an old uh radio drama of superman which like a lot of the stuff that we know and love about superman now actually comes from the radio drama so he kind of is going back to a very pure source of the character and telling the story in a contemporary way but without actually bringing it forward to contemporary time it's like i have talked enough about this book go buy it it's like 20 bucks like like don't it's is you you you're you're stupid if you don't go buy it that's 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 the end of that go go buy superman smashes the clan buy two copies buy one for yourself and buy one for somebody who you think could uh enjoy it or benefit from the story um yeah nice everybody's getting it for christmas from me so. <laughs> no, <laughs> nice. I don't, that's not necessarily nice. true but i love it but yeah cool i'm out cool. i'm tapped out i'm both out of out of things to recommend right now and also um i'm tired <laughs> and i'm well, losing I'm, my yeah. voice you can probably hear it. yeah yeah i uh i think that i would love to hear more recommendations from uh listeners yeah. Yeah. if there's some cool stuff that you're uh listening to or watching or reading um please <clears throat> share your thoughts yeah. and ideas but yeah i am i am tired now too so yeah i'll just say to close uh, i the, the the purpose of this segment was not to say that there's anything wrong with with content that comes from white creators it's just that i think that we all have a lot of access to to that stuff because of what we said before but like that is that's what we're fed as mainstream culture so let's just take a moment right now uh, at this point in in history to uh highlight some other stories that we think are great um and so yeah like like amanda says like we're asking you guys or inviting you guys i should say uh to to do the same thing like hit us up let us know what it what is some what's some cool stuff that you love uh from uh from uh i don't know i guess the creators of color can we say that as a term um yeah because that's uh that to me is one of the best ways that we can all be better um Mm -hmm and and take in other perspectives and learn and grow and i think that's one of the first places uh that that you can start if you don't know where to start is is uh listening and and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be grueling hard arduous work it can be as simple as consuming some media that you might not have gone out of your way to consume in the past and you're you're going to have fun. (laughs) It's going to be enjoyable. It is entertainment. Um, it might be entertainment that makes you uncomfortable or challenges you at times, 
but but I uh, I think that everything that we've recommended on this episode, it's all stuff that that you're gonna be able to find the enjoyment from and uh, and and uh, and and also learn something hopefully uh, about another perspective um, and uh, uh, yeah I don't know I th- that's it I'm done I I got I got nothing less left to say we've probably talked too much so this is a long episode um yes. thank you guys for listening as always you can follow us uh, uh, how do i even outro this episode just go to thunderquack.com for all the great other podcasts in the network they're they're awesome they're i think contact contact information is the one good thing yeah you said the you contact, contact stuff us. is important how so you us? if you want if you do want to uh, keep the conversation going with us uh, you can do that at facebook.com slash thunderquack on twitter at thunderquack pod and uh on instagram at thunderquack podcast uh and and you can also email us if you want to do that uh if you obviously want to send a larger like a longer message that that's probably gonna be the best way to do it um uh thunderquack network at gmail.com that's great uh you can also engage with us individually on uh twitter i'm at a conkin a-k-o-n-k-i-n you can add an 86 to that for instagram small plug if you follow me on twitter you'll see all of the links to film festivals that my little film keeps being in uh which also i'm sure has uh, like lots of other awesome independent work um that is still happening and around the world so cool yeah Uh, sorry no it's all good forgot i forgot about (laughs) that i'm still doing things in my life not just just i I mean like i think we're all forgetting (laughs) about stuff hey hey a quick reminder we are still in a pandemic (laughs) please wear your masks when you go outside when you go out in public especially when you go to the grocery store or uh to to public venues to protests Uh, uh, yeah (laughs) protests and all that sort of stuff um i know that i know that everybody listening to this is a is a good uh citizen that wants to to keep everybody safe and is doing that stuff so that's my passive aggressive way of shaming you into making sure that you wear your mask (laughs) i i if you want to follow me for more passive aggressive shame uh, you can do that uh, on Twitter at ArcWolf, A R K W U L F. Same on Instagram. Uh, basically everywhere. I mean, like if you just search that on all sorts of stuff, you'll find me. Um, awesome. That's it. That's it for this week. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, look, next week I think will be a lot less heavy uh, talk, uh, and and we'll we'll um, focus more on the geeky stuff, what you guys normally come here for. But uh, but just it know would be that, good if there was some stuff actually happening in the world, like hey, new television or new if movies. So, <laughs> if somebody related to pop culture would not be a complete and utter uh, garbage person, <laughs> yeah. um, and just like a, and somebody could just announce some cool stuff or like a new trailer <laughs> yeah. could come out or whatever. There was a trailer for Bill and Ted's uh, uh, Bill and Ted Face the Music, which I think will be an uplifting and wholesome uh, experience when that comes out. But um, We'll talk about that we'll next talk, time. We'll talk about that next fun. week. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, but but we are going to continue to have this conversation, um, and uh, and I and I hope that you guys will continue to to engage with us on that. Uh, thank you for listening. And we will see you guys next week. Stay safe, everyone. Wash your hands and be kind to one another. <laughs> <laughs>